The Trump administration has withdrawn an Obama policy directing local schools to allow transgender students to use the bathroom of their choice. The move has caused progressive men to twist their panties into a bunch, while progressive women are tearing at their beards in rage. At issue is whether boys, under the mistaken impression they're girls, can use bathrooms meant for girls under the mistaken impression there are no boys in the girls' room. Girls, under the mistaken impression they're boys, may also wish to use the boys' room so that they can be bullied mercilessly and have psychological problems for the rest of their lives. The Obama administration felt these rights were enshrined in the Constitution in James Madison's immortal phrase, et slay e bae although the phrase appears only in Obama's copy. The transgender issue has absolutely galvanized the left, who took time off from running through the streets shrieking obscenities, vandalizing businesses, and assaulting bystanders in order to take to the streets screaming obscenities, vandalizing businesses, and assaulting bystanders in the name of transgender bathroom rights. As one leftist reporter, as one leftist protester put it, quote, if the Trump administration can stop boys who think they're girls from using the girls' bathroom, soon it will be able to stop men who think they're eagles from throwing themselves off cliffs to catch sparrows in their teeth in midair. That's not the America I know and love, unquote. At the New York Times, a former newspaper, nearly half of the op-ed page was dedicated to the transgender issue because it affects so many Times journalists who are both men and women under the mistaken impression they're men. Times op-ed columnist Clarion Irrelevant wrote in his or her column, quote, For years, we progressives have been changing the inherent nature of reality by describing things falsely and shouting down conservatives who tried to tell the truth until at last, the world became full of unicorns crapping leftist rainbows. If you rescind transgender bathroom rights, these unicorns will have nowhere to go and will be forced to live in a world without leftist rainbow crap." Unquote. The Times later issued a correction, saying the columnist's medication had been delivered to the wrong address. <laughs> Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo, who has a position at CNN as a blithering knucklehead, was asked what he would tell a 12-year-old girl who didn't wish to see a boy's penis in her bathroom. Cuomo tweeted in response, and I grieve to tell you I'm not making this up, quote, I wonder if she's the problem or her overprotective and intolerant dad. Teach tolerance, unquote. Coworkers say Cuomo has changed since he met Milo Yiannopoulos on the website kidlove.com. The simple truth of the matter is that this is not an attack on transgenders at all. Obama's federal intrusion into local schools was deemed illegal by a U.S. district court, and the Trump administration simply decided to rescind the policy rather than spend tax dollars defending it on appeal. No true American would actually abuse transgender people. After all, this country was founded by men wearing long white wigs. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky, life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo Ship-shaped, ipsy-topsy, the world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray, it makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray, oh, hooray, hurrah. All right, we're back. It was a Clavenless weekend for Hollywood. We're here in the debris of the disastrous Oscars. We have honorary black gay uh, cultural correspondent Michael Knowles was there. He was actually at the Oscars. His job was to hand Warren Beatty the best picture envelopes. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what went wrong. But, but I'm, you know, I'm the only person who knew who would win. I knew they were going to be bullied into giving it to Moonlight instead of the picture that somebody actually saw. But, you know, it was it was a disaster last night. And, you know, they they told us for three hours uh, how to run the country. And then it turned out they couldn't even run the Oscars. And, uh, you know, the reason it was a disaster is because they didn't hire their presenters at ZipRecruiter.com. You know, that that is the whole problem. Uh, Donald Trump. Uh, what is he again? Oh, yeah, he's the president now. Uh, Donald Trump, the president, has guaranteed that he's going to bring the economy roaring back. That means you're going to be hiring people. You do not want to hire people like Warren Beatty who don't even know where they are. You want to hire people who know what they're doing. And with ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job offering to 200-plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, with a single 
click. You can find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified qualified candidates roll in to Zip Recruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. You can quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. Show Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway the door. Find out today why Zip Recruiter has been used by Fortune 100 companies and thousands of small and medium-sized businesses. And right now, my listeners and viewers can post jobs on Zip Recruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Why wouldn't you do this? It's free. It's like you get all these candidates and you don't wind up with people who sit around opening the wrong envelopes all the time. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try it for free. One more time to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire so your workplace does not look like the Oscars looked last night. All right. We will bring on uh, the honorary black gay cultural correspondent Michael Knowles in a little while. But first, I want to talk just a little bit about what happened at CPAC and why I think it's actually kind of important and interesting and it's going to unfold Probably this very week, some of the results are going to unfold uh, this very week. So what happened was CPAC, obviously, is where conservatives, especially young conservatives, gather. And it's always they always take a straw poll at the end, and the most conservative candidate usually wins. It's like last year, Ted Cruz was the big guy. And now Donald Trump, who a lot of conservatives have questions about, right, shows up and he takes the place over. And Kellyanne Conway made this kind of offhand joke, CPAC is going to turn into TPAC. And a lot of conservatives got upset because they thought, no, you know, we're not going to just follow Donald Trump to whatever he wants to do. You know, we're going to keep our conservative principles. All that turned out to be completely untrue as CPAC went nuts for Trump. So Trump gets up and he gives a you know, kind of his usual stump speech, really, and CPAC goes crazy. Here he is talking about Obama and what he inherited. This is number two. We inherited a national debt that has doubled in eight years. Think of it, $20 trillion. It's doubled. And we inherited a foreign policy marked by one disaster after another. We don't win anymore. When was the last time we won? Do we win a war? Do we win anything? Do we win anything? We're going to win. We're going to win big, folks. We're going to start winning again. Believe me. We're going to win. But we're taking a firm, bold, and decisive measure. We have to, to turn things around. The era of empty talk is over. It's over. So you could hear the protester being carried out, CPAC on USA, USA. They just, they just totally plunked for Trump. And Trump did one really good thing that, that I really liked. He went on a long, he started out with a long rant on the media and pointed out that even their reporting on his attacks of fake news turned out to be fake news. That <laughs> they, said, they said he had called the press enemies of the people, and that's not quite what he said, according to Trump. Here he goes. And I want you all to know that we are fighting the fake news. It's fake. Phony, fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. Because they have no sources, they just make them up when there are none. I saw one story recently where they said nine people have confirmed. There are no nine people. I don't believe there was one or two people, nine people. And I said, give me a break, because I know the people. I know who they talk to. There were no nine people, but they say nine people. And somebody reads it, and they think, oh, nine people, they have nine sources. They make up sources. They're very dishonest people. In fact, in covering my comments, the dishonest media did not explain that I called the fake news the enemy of the people, the fake news. They dropped off the word fake. So, so even his, the reporting on fake news is fake news. And he did reiterate his uh, allegiance to the First um, Amendment, which we all like to hear. That's always good because he is at war with the press. And he's rightly at war with the press. He canceled. He said he's not going to the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And he sent out a tweet saying, have a great evening. Because you know? <laughs> the whole point of the White House Correspondents' Dinner is, you know, 
what it what happens to that at that correspondence dinner is they show up and they allow Barack Obama to do a great comic routine and he's very charming and he does it really well. But if a Republican shows up, then he has to sit there with a, a forced smile on his face while some hack comedian rips him to pieces. And Trump just said no. You know, I mean, it's the same thing about the NAACP. You know, they always say, oh, he didn't go to the NAACP. It's a civil rights group. It was a civil rights group. It's now a Democrat front group. And the same thing is true of the White House correspondence dinner because the same thing is true of the press. So Donald Trump is handling this really well and CPAC uh, backs him. But the most important thing that happened at CPAC and the thing that made a lot of news was that Steve Bannon and Reince Priebus sat down together. Now this is, uh, there's all this theoretically fake news about the fact that they hate each other and they're struggling with each other and all this. And Bannon just came out and said, it's, it's ridiculous. But Priebus made the point that the two of them together represent a coming together of conservatism and the Republican Party, because the Republican Party has been a vehicle for conservatives, but it's never, it hasn't really been a conservative party since Reagan, who, remember, took over the Republican Party. They didn't want to give it to him. You know, he took over the Republican Party in the same way, uh, in a similar way to Trump. So here is Priebus uh, talking about why the Priebus-Bannon coalition is a good thing. Yes. Donald Trump, President Trump, brought together the party and the conservative movement. And I've got to tell you, if the party and the conservative movement are together, similar to Steve and I, it can't be stopped. And President Trump was the one guy, he was the one person, and I can say it after overseeing 16 people kill each other, it, it was Donald Trump that was able to bring this, this party and this movement together. And Steve and I know that. And we live it every day. Our job is to get the agenda of President Trump through the door and on pen and paper. You know, uh, the, the New York Times, a former newspaper, did a story about this transgender thing. And I wasn't kidding in that opening when I said half their op-ed page was dedicated to this. You know, this is, a, this is a policy that has been ruled illegal by a U.S. district court. It affects maybe 17 people in the entire country. It's an absurd overreach of federal government into local schools, right? So... They get rid of it, and the New York Times has this sourced, anonymous source story telling how it happened. And the story is that Jeff Sessions said, look, we're not going to spend taxpayer dollars appealing this. There's no reason in law for us, there's no uh, excuse in the law for us to be reaching into local schools. And Betsy DeVos, the education secretary, she came in and said, no, I, you know, I, I think we should leave this in place because we don't want to give the impression that we want transgender kids to be bullied. And so there were two sides. They were arguing it out, and Trump made the decision to go with Sessions. And the Times ran this as if it was some kind of sinister thing of, like, chaos. I thought, that's exactly how I want the White House to run. That's exactly how I want the White House to run. I want people with diverse views to come in and make their case and the president to make a decision between them. It so sounds good to me. So Priebus is saying that Trump has, around himself, united these two poles of the party. Then Bannon really did himself a favor because Bannon is being demonized. He doesn't like to put his face in front of the press. He likes to be uh, the guy behind the power behind this scene. And he came out and just showed himself to be an intellectual engine for the ideas of the Trump administration. Play the, the number five. This is him explaining that, you know, economic nationalism and cutting down on the administrative state, what he called deconstructing the administrative state, all these regulatory agencies that act extra legally, this is part of their agenda. The mainstream media don't get this, but we're already working in consultation with the Hill. People are starting to think through a whole raft of amazing and innovative bilateral relationships, bilateral trading relationships with people that will reposition America in the world as a, as a fair trading nation and start to bring jobs, high value added manufacturing jobs back to the United States of America. On the, on the, uh, on the national security part, it was certainly the first, I think the first two EOs that you've started to see implemented here of the last couple of days under General Kelly, and that is the rule of law is going to exist when you talk about our sovereignty and you talk about immigration. General Kelly and Attorney General uh, Sessions are adamant, you know, that, and you're going to start to see, I think, with the defense budget we're going to talk about next week when we bring the budget out, and also with uh, certain things about the, the plan on ISIS and, and what General Mattis and these guys think, I think you'll start to see the other part of that. But the third, this regulation, it, you oh, know, yeah. every business leader we've had in is right. saying not just taxes, but it is, right. uh, it is also the regulation. And I think the consistent, if you look at these cabinet appointees, they were selected for a reason, and that is the deconstruction, the way the progressive left 
runs, is that if they can't get it passed, they're just going to put it in some sort of regulation in, a, uh, in an agency. That's all going to be deconstructed, and I think that that's why this regulatory thing is so important. Uh, you know, so he, so he shows up, as Krauthammer says, he shows that he doesn't have horns, he shows he's not an evil guy. Here's why I think this matters, and I, I understand that conservatives are concerned that c the party is going to go over, you know, follow Trump away from conservatism, because Trump has certain instincts that are not conservative. And I have those concerns, too, and recent polls show that Donald Trump's popularity, which is lower than any president at this point, hinges on people like me. It hinges on people who voted really against Hillary Clinton, who don't really, you know, have, a, have some suspicions against him. But so far, so far, I'm really happy with what he's doing. But there are three things going on at once. One is, we've got the press, which has gone insane. So the press is insane, and Russian spies under the bed, and, you know, everything's a scandal, and every word Donald Trump says is stupid, and blah, 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 blah. They've gone absolutely nuts. They've made complete clowns of themselves. They're absurd. But it does create this aspect of hysteria and panic. And what you notice they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll then start to say, in their leads, they'll just say, the scandal-wracked beginning of the Trump administration. And you think, what? what's, you know, Mike Flynn, that's the scandal, right? Really? But they just assume that this, the fake stuff they've said is all true. And that's how it becomes part of the culture. It gets into the narrative. So that's one thing. On another thing, the other thing is the president who keeps saying stuff that isn't so. And some of it, I've got to be honest, I don't care about. I don't care if he, oh, it, you know, says the crowds at my inauguration were bigger than the crowds leaving, you know, Egypt in back of Moses. I don't care if he says that stuff. But I do care when he says we're going to take Iraqi oil and the Iraqis think, wait, are we being invaded? Are they coming to rob our oil? You know, we can't make friends with the people on the ground that we need to make, for the, the military needs to make friends with. So I care when he, when, I care when his loose lips, you know, cause him to say stuff that matters. But then there's the stuff that's being done, the appointments and the excellent appointments, excellent Supreme Court justice pick, excellent meeting with Netanyahu, uh, reestablishing our ties to Israel, all this stuff that's really, that really has been going extremely well. So there's a lot of confusion because the press is throwing up the smokescreen because Trump is such an outrageous character, and at, at the same time, the government seems to be working pretty well. Now it's time for Congress to step up. I've been calling them the Waldo Congress because where are they, right? So the Waldo Congress now has to step up, and there's now kind of word from sources that they're going to just throw a repeal and replace Obamacare bill out there so that people have to vote for it or else, really, these guys will be voted out of office if they don't repeal Obamacare. They're going to start to do the stuff that they have been promising to do, and let's see them get it done. And the reason it matters that Trump and, and Bannon gin up the base, is they have to know their support. If, if his popularity is so low, they are going to lie low. They're cowards. They're going to lie low until they know that Trump has enough support to make their jobs difficult, okay? When he comes in there with support and when people say, hey, we are not voting for you unless you repeal Obamacare and reform taxes and do all this stuff, then they'll act. And that's why CPAC, I think, was largely a good thing. Largely Trump and Bannon and Priebus did the right thing and got the conservative base behind them. All right, we got to say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, but if you want to hear the great and powerful, uh, what is your name again? Michael Knowles uh, <laughs> will be here uh, talking about the Oscars. Come over to thedailywire.com, and if you subscribe, you can actually throw a beanbag uh, beneath Michael's chair, and he will sink into the water. I made that. <laughs>